Aid. So, uh, first of all, what was your reaction to this news? And what happens to a woman's right to abortion given this? And how could this impact other rights down the road? My reaction is shock. Um, you know, I think we knew that this, this was coming based on the tone of the arguments in December. But I, I actually thought that Chief Justice Roberts might be able to put together a coalition that would at least stop the bleeding here at 15 weeks, which is what the Dobbs case uh, was advocating for. Instead, they've gone full bore in completely removing the right to an abortion. No rape uh, provision, uh, no incest exception, uh, no ifs, ands, or buts. There is no right to abortion in America. So what does that mean? It means that in those states uh, where there are these trigger laws that say if and when Roe versus Wade is overturned, then uh, we will immediately make it illegal to obtain an abortion in our state. There's 13 states with those. There are another a dozen or so states, including my state of Michigan, that has old laws still on the books. There's a 1931 law in Michigan banning abortion that became unconstitutional when Roe was decided in 1973. Once Roe is gone, that law is back. And so in about half the states in America, it will be illegal for a person to obtain an abortion. Um, what does that mean practically? It means that those with uh, the means will probably travel to states where it is legal, and those without the means will resort to other methods, like we saw before 1973 with back alley abortions. Uh, you know, Mika, I was reading that in Chicago in the 1960s, there were 4,000 emergency room visits per week in Chicago based on uh, emergency medical need for botched abortions. That's where we're headed. Uh, oh Barbara, let me let me exp ask you where we're headed uh, inside uh, inside the court itself. Um, this decision written in February. We of course are in early May. We may not get a final decision released for another month, month and a half. Uh, as you know uh, better than than most of us. Um, there's still horse trading going on, so-called horse trading, back and forth bar bargaining, uh, the, the, the exchanging of drafts, sometimes late into the process. Is it not possible uh, that uh, what we see at the end may be uh, if Roberts can figure out how to get Kavanaugh uh, or uh, Barrett or somebody else to take a more nuanced approach that, that pays greater respect? to the overwhelming majority's uh, opinion on this constitutional right on this 50-year president? Is there not a possibility that there may be a more balanced, nuanced approach to this when we get the final uh, opinion released in June? Yes, you're right, Joe. It is possible. And that, that horse trading does occur. Uh, you'll see drafts go back and forth. Someone will say, I can't sign on to this opinion, but what I could sign on to is one that uh, is the, the position that the Dobbs case was actually advocating for, which is a ban uh, after 15 weeks or later. And so we could see that. But what I don't think we're going to see is a complete reversal that says Roe still stands, mm -hmm. which was the viability standard. Um, and so I also, it, it, it really begs the question, Joe, to, it, who, who's behind this leak and why? Um, and there are a lot of theories. You know, one is that it's the outraged liberals on the court. The other is that it is some of the conservatives trying to dull the uproar when this ultimately comes out. But there's also a possibility that it is somebody who wants to see this case locked in, this decision, because those who care about mm -hmm. legitimacy, like Chief Justice Roberts, will be very un uninclined to want to change their view after it's been out there in the public domain, lest it appears that they are simply caving to public pressure. And so I think that really speaks a lot about what's going on in the internal dynamics of the court here.